Chief Justice John Roberts defended the Supreme Court's legitimacy at a judicial conference last week. Roberts said, quote, you don't want public opinion to be the guide to be the guide about what the appropriate decision is. The chief justice called it gut-wrenching to see the barriers around the Supreme Court after a draft opinion on Roe v. Wade was leaked. So, for more on this and other matters, CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson joins us now. She's also a professor at Loyola Law School in Los Angeles. Jessica, great to see you, as always. Um, so, walk us through what is the latest on the court's investigation into who leaked this draft opinion overturning Roe v. Wade? So there really haven't been that many leaks into the leak, uh, forgive that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's as the Supreme Court typically functions. Now, what Justice Gorsuch said is, we're going to have a report. He didn't say that report is going to be public. He just said, there's a report, and I think we'll get it soon. We know in a few things. We know that in the very beginning, it looked like the focus was very logically on the people who had access to the opinion. That means the law Law clerks. Mm -hmm. Every Supreme Court justice gets four law clerks at least a year who help with the drafting of the opinions and the justices themselves. We know that there was some reporting that some of the clerks had potentially obtained their own counsel, that they were being asked for their cell phones. But other than that, we really have no idea and, you know, save the tape for when and if we actually get the report. But I suspect we aren't actually going to know. I think this is going to be one of those we turned over as many stones as we could. This is mm. unique in the court's history, and we don't think it's going to happen again, and we put certain safeguards in place. No leaks about the leak. Well said, Jessica. Um, I also want to ask you about the Supreme Court is going to be reopening to the public for oral arguments, as Ch uh, the, the Chief Justice announced. Um, this happens, you know, comes as, as we see polling near historic lows in terms of public confidence in the court. Um, you know, public perception isn't meant to shape the justices in theory and their decisions, but do you find it does in practice, or what should we take away from this moment? It's a great question because, on the one hand, the court's legitimacy depends on us thinking it's legitimate. It has nothing to enforce its opinions other than our belief and respect in it. And they have mm. the power of the pen or keystrokes. They don't have an army that supports it. They can't go in there and enforce their decisions with a group of law enforcement officers who are going to say it's this or else. So, on the one hand, our view of them is desperately important. On the other hand, we actually don't want them to be dictated by what's popular. They have lifetime mm -hmm. appointments because they're supposed to be outside of politics. And oftentimes it is a judge's role to make decisions to protect individual rights, even if those individuals are unpopular. I'm thinking about cases I'm going to teach tomorrow in class dealing with socialists and anarchists. But we do have a problem when the Supreme Court is significantly out of step with public opinion on a variety of different issues. I don't know how broad that problem is, but I know that we're going into an arena where I think we have a very conservative court. We have some big cases coming up next term that starts October 3rd, and we're going to see a court that is not matching the majority public view. Yeah, I want to ask you a little bit more about that, because you have public officials uh, kind of weighing in here and and kind of raising questions about the credentials of this court. Uh, people like Vice President Kamala Harris, who over the weekend in an interview called the Supreme Court a activist court. Um, what do you think she bases that on? And do you think that that's an accurate characterization? So, in all honesty, typically we call judges and justices activists when we don't like their opinions. It's kind of right. shorthand for us to criticize. Having said that, there is a real definition in there somewhere, and it really is a court that's stepping outside of its role. For instance, a court that is overturning popularly enacted legislation when it really has no basis for doing so. And I think that's what she's getting at. She's getting at mm. the court is has kind of very big, you only live once energy, very big, you know, go big or go home. And the, the court is going to make massive changes in our daily lives in a lot of different areas. It, obviously, it already has in terms of abortion, and religion, guns. We're going to see more of that. And I think that's what she really means by activism.
Yeah, I mean, I think another item that might raise some questions about this is this analysis that was published by The Guardian that found the wife of Justice uh, Clarence Thomas, Ginny Thomas, who many people are familiar with, she's got connections with over half of the parties that lobbied the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. I know this could be kind of murky, but are there any kind of political uh, or legal ramifications for this? So I think only political and Justice Clarence Thomas, I think, is not bothered by that and not mm. legal for a couple of reasons. One, the recusal statute really doesn't apply to, or I should say the judicial code applies to all federal judges except nine, those nine Supreme Court justices. There is a recusal statute. There is some indication that I would say maybe not with respect to this case, but maybe with respect to the post-election litigation because of her involvement in the 2020 election that Clarence Thomas should have recused himself, that based on that very broad definition in the statute, that he really should have said, you know what, this raises questions, and that's basically the standard here. Having said that, there will be no, I think, repercussions. I think he's essentially immune to public pressure. I don't mm -hmm. think the Chief Justice is going to lean on him. He's not going to be impeached over this. I mean, I really don't think that's realistic at all. And so we're basically left with um, political pressure, which, as I said, I don't think moves him. Mm, yeah, and of course, she's someone to watch or someone of interest to those on the January 6th uh, committee. Um, well, a lot to unpack here with the Supreme Court coming back into session soon. Jessica Levinson, I know we'll be talking to you a lot over the next few months. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.